Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we talk about the ROG Xbox Ally without the X. So that means it is in white color as the box suggests. So as you have already probably watched the other video where we disassemble the ROG Xbox Ally X, uh, we said that it's very easy to open. A lot of components are accessible directly because it's just made that way. And um, I just want to open up this white color one and see what's the difference because from what I can tell you here when you hold it in your hands the ROG Xbox Ally is a lot lighter compared to the Ally X and that is just by me holding the two devices together so I'll show you from top to bottom how you can open this up so if you want to follow then you can because I, I do think that this is some sort of a well tutorial I guess so the first thing you will need is a screwdriver bit. I'm not sure if it's the this size or what. But then again, I would have to say the situation with the screws is actually quite uh, accessible because you only need one bit and then you can open up the entire Li or LiX for that matter. I need to loop this thing. So one thing you have to take note is that these screws, these four screws around this corner here are longer. So let's just take it all out. And you also have three more screws at the bottom here, which is again using the same Phillips screwdriver bit. It's a bit difficult to stabilize the device and also take out the screw, but this is how I do it. Oh, camera focus is on my hands, but yeah, essentially I grip the whole device using my left hand and my right hand uses the screwdriver. Yeah, here we go. Now, one thing I have to tell you is that these four screws here are longer in length. So as you can see, they're using this screw length. Okay, it's much longer. And then these three bottom screws are the shorter ones, these ones. So you have to take note where which screw goes. And then this screw here, you don't actually pop it out. So what it does is to help you open up the device a bit more so you get an easy access point. So let me just show you right here. When you start to unscrew, You can see it starts to open up ever so slightly. There we go. You can see the gap there. Yeah, it, it actually has a captive screw. So with that open, you can actually start to put in some sh tool, shimming tool, like let's just say this kind of plastic cards, and then you can start opening it up. There we go. Once this top part has been opened, as you can see from this line here, there are plastic clips here, 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 and here. And then when it's open this way, you can just slowly open it up. Be a bit gentle because the way the plastic curves into these two holders are kind of weird. All right. So just do the same for the bottom part as well. And there you go. The whole back plate is open. Now, I have to highlight once more, do not pull out the back cover when you got it open because there is a ribbon cable that connects from uh, the motherboard to the back panel here. As you can see, this, this little thing here. So, what you do is open up this little flap, open it up, and then what you do, lift up the black tab at the side here. You see this little black tab? I know it's a bit difficult to see since it's so small, but lift it up and then you can safely pull out the ribbon cable. And then now you can inspect the back plate. And as you can see here, there is a light sensor. You will have to cover this light sensor connect it to a charger and then only you can start it back up. 
of course with the ribbon cable connector. I, I will show you this later. The overall assembly is technically, I would say the same as the ROG Xbox Ally X. One thing for sure is that the chip is much smaller and the DRAM has been rearranged to put it here as well. So as you can see, yeah, then the chipset is a whole lot smaller. Because if you see this picture right here for the ROG Xbox Ally X, the chip is like the whole thing here. Hmm, okay. So I will do the same as what we did before. I will just start to disassemble stuff and show you how things go. Starting of course with the battery. So as you can see here, it says for the battery, you just have to um, pull out the tab and then you can lift up the entire connector. Again, it's a bit difficult to get into because it's nestled here. So what I will do is to use a pair of tweezers. I will show you right here. I'm very familiar with ROG Ally devices, so I know what I'm doing. But if you're going to do this to your own device, then keep in mind that I'm not responsible for any warranty as well. Yeah, so you can see here this little metal tab. You see this? Pull it out. You see it moving? Yeah, and then now the whole connector can be lifted upwards, which is kind of difficult to get into this kind of space, but... Mm. Ah, there we go. I lifted it up. And the battery comes out with just five screws. Two screws here, and then three screws at the bottom here. I might as well just take it out to show you guys because this is going to be a teardown video instead. Okay, the screws are in different lengths as well, so you have to take note which one goes where. And once the five screws are out, you can just lift out the entire battery. There we go. Yay, that's the battery. It is that simple to replace the battery. And once that's out, you can actually start to access the screen as well because I also fixed the uh, original Allies screen. So as you can see, this is the display connector. What you can do is to lift this latch upwards, lift it upwards, and then you can start to just take up the entire display with this little connector here. But I'm not going to do that in this video. What's surprising is that you can actually start to remove, if your screen is busted of course, you can remove the screen by pushing it down on the connector side. Because this is directly here, this part. So again, if you want to replace the screen, if the screen has already been busted, just give it a good push on this side and then it will pop out on this side and then you can start to remove the screen. You don't even have to remove the motherboard which I think is real nice in terms of repairability and the speakers are located here if you want to replace them as well the vibration motors are this side again they're just connected to the um, motherboard using these two connectors here and yeah the ssd i think has been rotated 180 degrees compared to the uh, lix no idea why and the joysticks let's open it up as well Oh, do remember to remove the ribbon cable first. Again, it's the same type of uh, latch style as the back ribbon connector that I showed you just now. So again, lift up the black piece and then the whole thing can be lifted up. This is the right joystick module and uh, I think the assembly is the same between the two allies, the Xbox allies I mean. And uh, let's remove the left joystick now. I should remove the ribbon cable first, lift it up, pull out the ribbon cable, it's that simple. And there we go, this is the left joystick module, this is the right joystick module. I'm once more gonna repeat the same thing, I'm not sure if third party manufacturers are gonna sell the whole thing as a module like this or you have to desolder and resolder a new joystick yourself on this tiny PCB, but either way, it's very fixable, I would say. It's easy to take out and also fix. Uh, also rather simple, I would say. So if any third party manufacturers just sell the entire module like this, then you don't even have to solder. Just buy the new module, plug it in, and then it will work. It's that simple. You might have to do some recalibration, but that's a small matter. 
Now, looking at the motherboard once more, as you can see here, the SSD. Okay, let, let's take out the SSD as well. This is an M.2 2280 SSD, which is real great because, well, I would say 99% of this world's devices are now using 2280 SSDs because it's just that accessible. Mm, they have a tape here, which is surprising because I don't remember seeing a tape on the uh, ROG Xbox Ally X. And you also have this sleeve, which I think is meant for heat isolation. For this particular module here, we have the 4C SSD. I'll leave more information on the screen here, 512 gigs for this particular version. And uh, I'm not really worried about thermal throttling because this entire sticker is, seems to be made out of silver as well. Hmm. And uh, you also have this sleeve here to you know help with heat and whatnot um, removing the ssd might be a bit more difficult the first time because of this tape that tapes below the battery no idea why but that's how they choose to do it and as you can see here we are very clearly seeing the ram modules here on these two sides as well flanking the apu which is a lot tinier than the AI Extreme, AI Z2 Extreme, yeah. Okay, I think that's about it. If you guys want to see the thermal pads, it's all located in this area here as well. Nothing much to see here, of course, but in terms of repairability, I would say it's great. Everything is very accessible, much more accessible compared to the original ROG Ally that we had. Uh, ROG Ally and Ally X, the non-Xbox versions that were released previously. I know the names are confusing, but yes, that's how it is. So I will just put back everything together and I will show you how this light sensor works. Okay, so I got the reassembly back to this stage. So I will show you what's up with this back panel and this light sensor here. Uh, let me just reconnect everything and uh, you have to be a bit more careful because the way this cable goes in, you don't have much slack to maneuver the cable. So you have to do it real close to the main compartment, the main main board. Takes a bit of fiddling as well. Once you got it in, lock it in. Okay, done. The cable is not coming out. Um, you have to be real careful when you close it. So there we go. When you close it, just remember to press it around the grips as well, the top and the bottom. Once we are done, I'm not going to screw it back in first. And this is where the light sensor comes into play because as you can see, I can't turn it on even though I have reassembled it as is. So what you need to do is to actually plug in your charger. Wait for a while when it lights up in red and then we can turn it back on. This is because the light sensor will need to detect that once you close it, when you plug in a charger, there is no light going into the light sensor. Then you can boot it up. And since I also removed the battery, it's technically a BIOS reset, so it needs to do some memory training. So the first boot up after I open it will take some time. And there you go. We are now finally back into Windows 11. And that's how you disassemble the ROG Xbox Ally and the Ally X because they are both using the exact same layout inside. And yeah, I would have to say in terms of repairability, it's real good, real simple to open up and also clean. And um, and that's it. If you have any other questions regarding this device in terms of repairability and whatnot, then do leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to help you out and we'll see you guys in the next video. It's amazing that they improve the repairability to the point that it's so easy to fix it. Yeah.